and welcome to Zigwheels. Today we've got with us TVS's Ronin, which is a bit confusing. And on this very rainy day here in Goa, we've been able to spend some quality time with it, in which we've stripped away at some of its layers and examined some of its promises to understand what kind of a motorcycle it is. But first, we'll start with what is it? Because the Ronin, unlike its concept version, the Zeppelin, isn't just a cruiser, although that's where it starts. Well, if you look at the forks and the way they're splayed out, you think this was a cruiser, right? Now, if you looked at this part of the motorcycle, the muscular tank and the way the foot pegs are positioned a little bit forward, you'd say it was a roadster. And then, if you came to this portion of the motorcycle, the high mud guard with those chunky tires, you'd say it was a scrambler. But if you zoom out and look at that long wheelbase, and even if you look at the chain cover, the way it's got that massive cover running, almost like a bell drive, you think it could be a cruiser. Now surely you won't have an issue with the design elements that make up this motorcycle. The wheelbase is long enough, the tank is chunky enough, but it still does feel a bit small, doesn't it? Well, let me explain. When you look at the CV350 RS or the Classic 350, those motorcycles are running on 19 or 18 inch rim combinations, which just allows them to have a stance that just makes them bigger. Whereas the Ronin is running on 17 inch rims and that kind of dictates along with its tires the kind of stance that it can pull off. Now when you look at it in parts, the Ronin does feel impressive. For starters, that headlamp is immediately recognizable and does look premium. As do those front forks here on this top end variant because it's finished in gold for this one. It also is a little bit more premium in the way it looks because this muscular tank, which reminds us of a particular motorcycle, some of you have already guessed which one, gets this pinstriped element, but keep in mind, that's of course a sticker. And along with that, you also have that typical TDS quality in terms of build, it is absolutely the benchmark setter. And aside from that, you get this funky looking instrument cluster, which is packed with a fair amount of information and also connects to your mobile device through the TVS app and allows you to use a voice assistant, which can help you through uh, navigation when you're on the go. Okay, the one thing I did not like is this grab ring. It just looks a little bit of an afterthought, but again, on the plus side, it is, well, well finished. Basically, if you can put aside the confusion regarding how the Ronin looks and get onto the saddle, you realize from there it feels like a substantial and satisfying motorcycle. The top spec model also gets pan adjustable levers and more connectivity features for added substance. Hopefully that explains how and why the Ronin looks, but now let's talk about how it rides. With a split cradle frame, show up big piston upside down forks and bespoke TVS Remora tires, the Ronin sounds solid and premium. What's it like to ride? To answer that, I'm going to talk about the price because this Ronin is sitting about 40, 50,000 rupees below the rivals like the CB350RS or the Classic 350 which means it's just more accessible. And that's exactly how it feels to ride. It might have the long wheelbase, raked out forks, but it doesn't feel cumbersome. And its weight is 160 kilograms, seat height is 795 millimeters, which means it's a motorcycle that you can just get onto and get on terms with very, very quickly. Of course, because of the layout, you do have to put in a bit more thought, let's say if you want to change directions quickly. But aside from that, everything about it feels very city friendly. The suspension, that premium suspension does feel premium to ride. We're going to have to test it out for longer over more variety of surfaces but the first impressions are that it is as good as it looks and along with that you've got good bite from the brakes but the issue there is that you need to put in a lot of effort at the lever to really get heartbreaking done. You do have two modes 
urban and rain to calibrate the braking but by and large my real issue there was just the amount of effort required to get the bike stopped really quickly. Despite that, the Ronin promises to be very versatile, breezy for city use and confident for highway jaunts. Newer or smaller riders won't be intimidated by it and at the same time, six-footers won't feel cramped on it either. Well, what about the engine? Now to the heart of the matter. This 225cc engine has its genetics derived from the RTR 200. It's got the same bore but it's got a longer stroke and along with that there's a heavy amount of change made to the motorcycle to make it more efficient and to make it more torquey which is apt for this kind of motorcycle. Aside from the stroke being longer, the flywheel is heavier, the cams are different and there's tech like a slip and assist clutch that makes gear changes an absolute breeze. There's also an integrated starter generator to save weight and boost efficiency. For starters, this engine doesn't have a starter motor. Just listen to the way this starts up. Softly. So fewer revs required every time you start up, which is saving every little drop of fuel. Along with that, it has basic cooling elements added onto it, which makes the engine more efficient. And TVS has also tried to reduce rider discomfort from engine heat at low speeds. The engine itself is delivering 20 PS of power and 20 Newton meters of torque, which doesn't sound much. But keep in mind that this is 20 kilograms lighter, 21, than the CB350, which is a lot. And on top of that, this is supposed to deliver a lot of torque at low revs. There's more. TVS claims it will be faster to 60, it will overtake more easily that it will lug better and climb up mountain slopes better. And the performance from the saddle is pretty much as advertised, which is to say competent, if not very exciting. Let me explain. In terms of the drivability, this thing is fantastic. You can pull from 20 kilometers an hour in fourth gear without a hiccup. Fifth, just a bit more and it'll pull. You could crawl over speed breakers in third or fourth without even realizing the engine is smooth, has just the right kind of pulse to give you that connection with the motorcycle. At the same time, if you want to put on speed and get out of the city where it feels pretty much at home, you will find that it also puts on speed nicely, getting up to 90, 100 kilometers an hour without too much of an effort. But going past that might be something we'll have to explore at a later point in time. But anyways, its top speed of 120 isn't exciting. But I think overall, this is meant to be an easy all-rounder. And in that sense, it does feel competent. Fuel efficiency as per TVS should be better than its rivals by a healthy margin. So with its 14-litre fuel tank, it could also outlast the others. As a motorcycle, the Ronin is trying to cover a lot of ground and from our experience here today in Goa, the way the suspension works, the way the engine just makes things easier, the way it kind of connects with the rider, the Ronin certainly does seem like a very capable motorcycle. If TVS were to make three different motorcycles, a Scrambler, a Cruiser and a Roadster, on this platform, we think it would unlock the awesomeness, ability and appeal of this platform. Now, even in terms of its pricing, it's making a lot of sense. But if you want to look past the capability and the sensible quotient of the Ronin and start looking for personality and compare it to its more traditional rivals, that's when you realize that probably this won't tug at your heartstrings the same way that they do.